All right, let's review a little bit the four main theorems of vector calculus. So the first one is the fundamental theorem of line integrals, which says that the integral over a curve of the gradient of a function, dot dr, equals f of b minus f of a, where a and b are the starting and ending points of the curve. Green's theorem says that the integral over c of p dx plus q dy is the double integral over r of qx minus py dA, where r is a region in the xy plane whose boundary is c with a positive orientation so that r is on the left as you walk along c. And Stokes' theorem says that the integral over c of f dot dr is the double integral over s of curl f dot ds, where s is a curved surface in three-dimensional space with an orientation, and c is its boundary oriented positively with respect to the orientation of s. And finally, the divergence theorem says that the double integral over s of f dot ds is the triple integral over e of the divergence of f dv where E is a three-dimensional solid region, and S is its boundary surface with the outward orientation. Now, all these, three, all these four theorems have something in common. They all relate the integral of something on the boundary of something to the integral of the derivatives of something on the interior. So they all have the form um, integral over boundary equals integral of derivatives over interior. So in Green's theorem, um, we have the integral over the boundary curve of p dx plus q dy, and that's related to the integral over the interior, well, well, not of all the derivatives, but anyway of something made out of the derivatives of p and q. And likewise, for Stokes' theorem, we have the integral of a vector field on the curve, and that's equal to the inter double integral over the surface bounded by the curve of the curl of f, and the curl of f is some object constructed out of some of the partial derivatives of the components of f. Likewise, for the divergence theorem, the double integral of f over a surface is equal to the triple integral over the solid region of the divergence, which also involves the derivatives of the components of f. The fundamental theorem of line integrals can also be regarded this way. If you think of the boundary of c as consisting of the two points, b and a, and f of b minus f of a is like the integral of f over these two points, where b has a positive orientation and a has a negative orientation and then relating that to the integral of the gradient of f over the curve, the gradient again being made out of the derivatives of f. And this, of course, is a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the most basic version of this, which relates the integrals of the derivatives of a function over an interval to the values of the function on the boundary of the interval. There's actually something called generalized Stokes theorem which includes all of these theorems and also higher dimensional generalizations of them as special cases. So there's a single theorem which says the integral of something over the boundary 
is equal to some appropriate thing made out of its derivatives on the interior. This is something you can learn about in a more advanced course. Okay, so what are some of the things that we do with these theorems? So what do you do with, say, Stokes' theorem? Well, you can find the integral over c of f dot dr when c is a closed curve by choosing a surface, an oriented surface, s with boundary c and integrating the curl of f over s. Another trick you can do is if you want to calculate the integral over the curve c of f dot dr, which is not a closed curve. So I mean in this first example, this, this c is a closed curve, because to be the boundary of a surface it has to be a closed curve. But if you have a curve which is not closed, you can't apply this directly, but if the integral over this curve is difficult to evaluate, you could replace it by some more convenient curve, maybe like this. Here's a curve C prime, and the difference between these two curves is the boundary of some surface S. So in this picture, the integral over C of f dot dr is the double integral over s of curl f dot ds plus, so this is when s is oriented, sort of pointing out of the picture like that, um, plus the integral over c prime of f dot dr because the double integral of s over the curl is equal to the integral over the whole boundary of s. And the boundary of s consists of c with the orientation drawn together with c prime with the opposite of the orientation drawn. So the double integral over s is the integral over c minus the integral over c prime. So if the left hand side here is impossible to compute, you might be able to set things up so that the right hand side, both parts of it are computable. The uses of the divergence theorem are analogous. So if you want to calculate the double integral over s of f dot ds, um, well, if s is a closed surface, which doesn't cross itself so that it's a, the boundary of a solid region E, then you know that the double integral over S of F dot DS is plus or minus the triple integral over E of the divergence of F dV. And why the plus or minus sign? Well, because for the divergence theorem to work, S has to be oriented outward. So this sign is plus if S is oriented pointing out of E. Otherwise, it's a minus sign. Now, if S is not a closed surface, so if S looks like this, I'm just going to draw a cross section. So here's S. And maybe this integral can't be evaluated directly, or it's very difficult. But maybe you could replace the surface S with another surface, S prime, that has the same boundary. So let's call the boundary C. So both S and S prime have the same boundary curve C, and they're both oriented positively with respect to C. So S maybe is oriented like this, and S prime is oriented like that. And say the region between these two surfaces is E then the divergence theorem tells you that the double integral over s of f dot ds 
is the triple integral over e of the divergence of f dv plus the double integral over s prime of f dot ds. And that's because the divergence theorem says the triple integral over e is the integral over the boundary of e, and the boundary of e consists of s with the orientation shown and s prime with minus the orientation shown. So the triple integral over e is the double integral over s minus the double integral over s prime. So if you can set things up so that these two terms on the right are easier to compute, then this can be an effective way to evaluate the double integral over s. Anyway, that concludes our summary of the four main theorems of vector calculus and some of how you can use them. And this also concludes the whole course.